Hey y'all, how are y'all doing today? I don't know if you can see I've got my front door open hoping my puppy dogs won't bark too much while we're trying to do this video. They come in and out like the big kids. They go out, they want in, they're in, they want out and they bark. So um, that way they can run in and out and maybe too many wasps won't come in here on us because my wasps are swarming on my front porch because spring is almost here and I'm so thankful for that because I'm just not a winter person. I don't winter well. Um, my son, one of my sons is, and so I just think, what's wrong with him, you know, but I'm kidding. Some of us like it, some of us don't. But anyway, I want to make a little sweet treat with y'all because all we've been doing is savory stuff, and I try not to cook sweets all the time because y'all and I don't need to eat them, but they're so good and fun. And this one, it's um, St. Patrick's Day today, so I thought of this little cake, and Meg, I thought of you years ago the boy scouts would come spend the night here for a troop gathering a weekend camping trip and they would be all on the hill of our pond and john and i would pop up the tent out there to sleep too and the scout master robin thought we were crazy like why don't you just sleep inside in your bed comfortably but we just wanted to you know join in be there with them but anyway i made this cake because we had a fish fry and i love this little lime cake it's traditionally called a key lime cake but I couldn't find key limes in the store this time. I have many times. So I got just regular Plano limes. <laughs> so we're just going to call it a lime cake. It's got cream cheese frosting. It also has a little glaze that goes on the cake. It makes it really moist and good. Um, this cake is, like I say, it's just a traditional. Starts off kind of like just a regular cake mix. And then you add these things to it. One of them is Jello, lime Jello. I'm doing this because it's St. Patrick's Day, but you don't have to do lime Jello. You could do orange, orange cake. I made this one during that fish fry with the Boy Scouts as well. It was very good. You could do lemon or pineapple. Either one. I've done both. Both of them really well. Or you could do raspberry, and it's really good too. So you see how you could do that. Um, any flavor you want to with this basic recipe so do that because I've done them all and I even thought about we might do some with more than one flavor layered um, maybe for Easter in the future I know I'm always thinking ahead thinking ahead right and also I want to say one more thing before we start if you do not want to do from scratch where you get out the flour and the sugar and the baking powder and soda and all that that's fine too. I think, and I have before, used a regular just yellow cake mix or white cake mix with your whatever flavor jello you want, okay? And it's good too. Um, with those cake mixes, I always add a teaspoon of vanilla to enhance the flavor, and I always add one more extra egg. So, I just want to tell y'all that you don't have to start from scratch if you don't want to. And nobody will know a difference. I'm telling you, they'll still love it and enjoy it. That piece of cake that you took out the time. And it is homemade, right? Because you're going to make it at home. I know. So, let's get started on this one from scratch. Um, we're going to do our one package of lime jello. And it is a three ounce package. And 16 grams, I think it said. Hope I'm not lying to y'all because I can't see anymore. You never think that day would come. And, oh, it's 85 grams. <laughs> Woo! I was way off, wasn't I? You don't. You don't ever think that day would come and you see all the old folks wearing the glasses. And then all of a sudden the day comes and you're like, oh, well, it's here. What happened? I know. All right, so our three ounce box of lime jello. And to that, we're going to add some flour. I have got two cups of all-purpose flour. And I went on and pre-measured, so maybe it won't take quite so long. And I've got two cup, I mean one and one-third cups of sugar going in. <coughs> to that, I need some salt to kind of balance out your sweet in there. And we're going to do one half teaspoon of salt. There we go. And then we've got baking powder and baking soda in here. Baking powder is going to be one teaspoon. Measuring it off. It's got that little place on this clover girl where you can 
do it off an even teaspoon or whatever you're measuring and I love that and then with the baking soda also one teaspoon as well as well there we go and I believe that's all of our dry ingredients so before we add any wet ingredients I got one of these whisks that y'all sent me. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to whisk everything around because if you add wet ingredients without whisking all your dry ingredients, um, you'll get little clumps of baking soda or baking powder, um, even salt. And I've done that. I know that for sure um, in my cornbread before. And who got it? John. Not me. John. <laughs> That's how that goes, right? I know. So, y'all be sure and whisk it around real good like that. All right, now we'll start adding our wet ingredients. And I'm gonna start with some um, orange juice. And that's what's good about this. Y'all see, I didn't get out a mixer. I know, you can just whisk this little cake. It's just a traditional old-time little cake. So you don't have to get out a mixer. Many of the cakes we make, you don't have to. It's just kind of easier when it gets to really mixing or like cream and butter and stuff like that so i'm going to just start dumping in here i'm going to put some orange juice three quarter cup and the orange juice is um a really nice addition because it too enhances a flavor in here that lime flavor and if you're using the orange jello use orange juice if you're using the uh, raspberry or the pineapple whatever you still put this orange juice it's just enhancing the flavor okay or you can change it up you can put pineapple juice in the pineapple right I know so I think y'all get that right I need to hush um, to that I need some fresh lime juice and I need one tablespoon of one of my little limes so I'm going to cut this and of course, if you use the lemon, you could do lemon juice and so on and so forth. Y'all are like, Amy, we got it the first time. <laughs> but y'all know, y'all know what I mean. I just love to say that each time. And I need like one tablespoon and I don't quite have a tablespoon on that little lime. Little limes are a little smaller and not quite as juicy as a lemon, but I tell you, these limes are pretty juicy. We're almost there. There we go. Into that it goes. And let's see, what next do we need? We need some vegetable oil. And you can put one and one half cups of vegetable oil or corn oil. Today I'm going to use coconut oil. I just thought that would be really nice addition to the lime. Lime and coconut, right? And this is coconut oil and it doesn't have, mine's organic and it's unflavored. So you don't taste coconut, but maybe just the teeniest, tiniest little bit. But that's not the traditional cake recipe. It's just some sort of oil like vegetable oil or corn oil. One and one half cups. Let me make sure I'm not telling a fib over here. Yes, that's it. Yum, yum. Well, that coconut oil is supposed to be a lot better for us. Um, supposed to be this year. It might change next year. Y'all know how all that goes <laughs> Right and let's see we also need one teaspoon of vanilla Also enhances flavors Yes, it does Oh vanilla and let's see I've got my orange juice my lemon juice my vanilla my oil and now the last thing we need to do is some eggs and I do need to whisk them pretty good or let me grab a fork. The forks were over there by y'all. <laughs> All right, let me just kind of beat my eggs up just a little bit in this. Five of them, I know. It makes it a really nice, rich cake. My girls have started making eggs again. When the hunting dogs uh, were no longer here, we don't know what happened. We hope the owner came back and got them once I fattened them up. <laughs> but anyway, when they were no longer here, I was able to let out my chickens. And that old saying, happy chickens, you know, will lay the eggs. Well, I guess it's true because they started laying eggs again. They got happy getting to get out. They were just used to getting out. 
if yours aren't used to getting out of the coop, then they're probably happy. But mine knew better than that, didn't they? Five eggs are going in. And I'm going to get all those eggs, all the richness of that egg. Put that there. All right, y'all. We're just going to stir this and mix this up. Are y'all imagining how good this is going to taste? I know we're going to make a cream cheese icing. And it has a little glaze out of lime juice and powdered sugar going into the cake while they're warm. You can imagine how moist and great this little cake is. If you make it with the orange, it reminds me of the orange uh, county fair cake, you know, that I did, that um, I saw on another cooking show. All right, guys. It's come together just like that. Didn't take much. That little whisk made for some fast whisking time. Yes, it did. Wow. That is amazing. Isn't that a beautiful color? All of these are like vibrant, gorgeous colors, you know. It's like, it reminds me of Easter in springtime. I love it. Okay, guys. Let me put this right here. I'm going to show y'all what I prepared. I am going to put it in the oven on 350 degrees preheated um, in three 8-inch little um, cake pans. Start calling them pie pans. But you could use um, some 9-inch ones if you want to. I like the 8-inch just because it, for, to me, it looks a little bit neater when you're stacking a cake, but that's just me and my goofiness. Um, you could do it in a 9 by 13 if you want to carry this to a gathering, a family gathering, or a church social, or whatever. And then you've got your lid, and you could just leave it in that pan and frost it. So that might be the easier way to transport it. Um, you could do that. You could make cupcakes out of this. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And instead of buttering and flouring, I just sprayed mine with some of this Baker's Joy. There's other brands out there that I get to. And it's already got everything the flour everything it's like you really worked on that isn't that something i know so i need to evenly distribute this between my three nine inch pans i mean eight inch excuse me excuse me i really need to put same measurements and everything on here because all i do is say it wrong when i'm talking to y'all <laughs> I'm telling you, while you're doing something and talking, it's amazing. If you haven't tried it, try it. And you'll say, oh, oh, I get it. Y'all see, I'm trying to be even right now. So I'm starting off with one cup in each one. This is so pretty. It, it just puts me in a good mood just to do this. So do this if you're, if you're feeling down in the dumps and need some winter... Um, time to go away and you need some springtime colors. Do this. I'm telling you. This is great. You could also do this in probably two um, cake pans and they would be thicker cakes, you know. So you make this whatever you want to do with it. Okay, okay. Let's see here, guys. Y'all know I don't like to waste. Mm-mm. So I'm going to get all the goodie. Yes, I am. Who's a little shy? There we go. Okay, y'all, I'm going to put these, I just put these on a pan just for easier in and out of the oven. They're going in there 350 degrees. And I'm going to set my oven on those 8-inch pans for about 20 minutes and start checking it because that's what I want to tell you. Let me set this little thing. If you overbake your cake, your cake's going to get done at one point. Then, every minute after that, all it does is start drying your cake out, drying your cake out, over-baking it. So, you want to get them out as soon as they are baked and done, and not a minute or two or three after because it just keeps, it just starts drying your cake out. So, 20 minutes, I'm going to check them, and how I like to check them 
is I have these little skewers, these little wooden skewers. You can use a toothpick if you want to. You know, and I'll dip it in there. And if it comes out totally clean, your cake is done and it started getting overdone. If it comes out and it's got a little bit of crumbs on it, nothing that's wet, just crummy, that is perfect. And yank them out, okay? <laughs> so anyway, that's all I'm going to say about not overbaking our cakes. And I'm talking myself as much as I am y'all. So I'll see y'all back in about 20 minutes and we'll check on these cakes. Y'all, yeah, some of you have heard me talking about this apron I have on right now. Um, you see it, it crisscrosses in the back and has a big old bow and it has some adjustments on the straps where it crisscrosses. My mother homemade this apron for me. So it's very precious to me because of that, but not only was it homemade by my mother for me, it was homemade with some old flour sacks and old sugar sacks that we found in John's grandmother's canning kitchen, right where I have my canning kitchen or really close to it. And that canning kitchen had been sitting up for somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 years and it had mice and rats and all your little varmints, you know, moths and such that's on farms and in the woods had gotten into most everything in there. And there was this stack of flour and sugar sacks that his grandmother had washed and folded all pretty and neat. And I guess it was so stacked and so compact, things were stacked on top of them that not one did a moth get into and they were in pristine condition. Do y'all see this? Well, my mother, I showed my mother and she had a fit. My mother sewed, sewed, sewed. Her mother sewed. My mom all raised. She sewed almost all of our clothes. My Barbie doll clothes, everything. Um, it was great. And y'all, I did not take that up. I do not like to sew. <laughs> I sew, but it's only if I have to. Now, my sister Ginger likes to sew, so she got that. But um, I showed these flower sacks and these sugar sacks to my mother. She had a fit over them. And what she did was took them and she made me some napkins, some dinner napkins. Y'all see this? Isn't that sweet? I've got a whole stack of those she made me dinner napkins from. And she made me this apron. And I mean, she really took out the time. She put uh, lace and ribbon on here and did little designs. That's, what is that, a chevron? going up and down a rickrack. I don't know. Y'all see I'm not much of a sewer, but it was gorgeous. It's precious. And this was made out of those old flower sacks. So to me, it brings a keepsake and it brings our two families together. This is from my side of the family that my mother did all the work. And from John's side of the family was furnished this antique fabric. And so it's very special to me. And I love to share it with y'all and show y'all what a treat I have. And it's even more special to me now because my mother did this about four years ago. And four years ago, she was fine. And now we have her in a, a skilled nursing facility and she has Alzheimer's. So she no longer will sew this. She will never sew anything like this again. And she sewed and sewed and sewed and sewed her whole life. So this really feels even more special now to know that this is one of the last things she sewed and that I will never be able to have this, you know, again in the future. I wouldn't. So um, it's even more special to me. And I want to take y'all and talk to my mama a little bit with y'all and, and show her to y'all. She's a registered nurse. And um, so it's, it's heartbreaking when your mama gets something like that. It really is. She doesn't know that I'm her daughter anymore. She'll ask me when I keep calling her mama. She'll say, do you know who your mama is? Like she's real concerned for me. <laughs> and I say, yes, ma'am, you're my mama. And she'll just look at me like, mm, I think she's mistaken. And she'll say, okay. But um, so, so like I say, this is real precious to me. But um. I'm going to get a little cleaned up around here and we're going to make that glaze to get ready to go on that cake. And when they come out while they're still warm, we're going to glaze this cake, okay? So y'all hang in there. While our cake is still baking, we need to make this glaze because while the cake's still warm, so it'll absorb this glaze, is when we'll put it on. We're going to need one half cup of lime juice, fresh lime juice, and one half cup of 
confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. So I'm going to put that in there. And now let's measure out. Um, I'm going to let y'all know how many limes it takes me to get one half cup of lime juice, okay? They're all different. Some limes are juicier than others and bigger than others. So I don't know how many limes to tell you to use. I just got me a whole bag of limes because I drink lime in my water every day. Every day. I love lime. In tea, I love it. Lime or lemon. And I've gotten here lately, I love limes more than I do lemons. That was pretty good. Pretty juicy. Many of y'all have written me and said that your mother also has Alzheimer's. And um, I think it's sweet you're sharing your little story with me, you know. Life throws some weird stuff at us, doesn't it? It sure does. I hope that people can look back on us and say we at least faced it with some grace, huh? <laughs> that's all I can do. That's all I can hope for is try. All right, that's two limes, y'all. Y'all camp with me. Y'all camp. I know, I'm not. I'm just yakking, huh? <laughs> this is the time of the year. Did y'all hear that? That um, here in the United States, that they have passed that we're not going to go back to daylight savings time. We're not going to fall backwards in the fall. We're just going to stay like this. Isn't that crazy? I know. I personally think I'm going to like it because I like the longer days, but I don't know. I'm just going to deal with it, whatever it is. And then I saw some stations saying, some t television stations, that's three limes, and I'm at a quarter of a cup. Thank y'all for counting for me. I saw some stations saying, though, that we did this back in the 1970s and that we ended up uh, not liking it for some reason or another. And so we changed back. So who knows what the future will bring, right? <laughs> Right now, though, I'm liking that, that we're not going to be springing forward and falling backwards. That sounds good to me. Um, and I almost think I remember that when I was a little girl in the 70s, way back. Um, I was born in 1967, but I remember catching the bus, and I may have been in like the first grade, and it was still dark outside, and... I know a lot of kids do that now because the buses are all spread out too far and too thin and having to go too far. But back then, you know, it, it was good in daylight by the time you caught the bus. And I remember that time period. And I remember it was weird. And hearing my parents talk about it a little bit. Okay, y'all, that was one, two, three, four, and one half limes. So four and a half is what it took me. <laughs> right? You could probably do with four. Because they're juicy, decent sized limes. And he's just going to be fine because I'm going to put him in me some water for supper. There goes our cakes. Let me check them out. They've been in there 25 minutes, okay? Let's see. Let's see what they are looking like. Mm, I don't see them jiggling. They're perfect. 25 minutes for your 8 inch cake pans on 350. Or at least that's what my oven did. Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> they are. They just scream. Happy St. Patrick's Day, don't they? Or happy spring or happy Easter. With Easter coming, I want to make some pretty cakes with y'all. It's time we do some pretty things, right? I know. All right, guys, I'm going to let those cool just a minute. And into our half cup of confectioner sugar. We're going to put that half cup of lime juice. That's easy enough to remember, isn't it? I'm going to stir this together until all the sugars um, dissolved in our lime juice. And I'm going to let these cakes cool for about three to five minutes and then I'm going to put them on a rack, okay? A cooling rack. And we will put this this glaze on there. So I'll see y'all back in just a second. All right, y'all. 
We've got our glaze. I got my little brush, okay? And I've got my cakes cooling here on a rack, but they're still nice and warm. I just turned them out. And my rack wasn't big enough for all three of these, so I just put one on my pan. And I'm gonna brush this on. You can just pour it on, but um, sometimes when I pour, and I'll accidentally pour most of it on one cake, so I try to be a little more even with it like this, with my brush. Y'all know what I mean? Especially if I'm talking. I won't pay any attention. I'll just pour it all over one cake. I do that if I'm driving, which is kind of scary, but I've always been that way. I'll drive past where I need to turn into if I'm just yakking with somebody. Yes, I will. Okay, y'all. This works out better to me with a brush, yeah, because I'm getting it on there kind of even. Anything that drips off would just get down on that first cake, right? Yeah. That's what I think, too. Y'all see how moist and magnificently citrus this is going to taste. It's just going to... You're going to spring to life taking a bite of it. And I'll tell you, that's why I serve these little citrus cakes with fried fish, what I was saying earlier, because fried fish is a sort of a heavy meal, you know, fried um, meat. And this is nice. I'm going to pour that one on that one down there, too. This is real nice because it seems like you eat a piece of fried fish and then uh, you need something to cut that, you know, and this is citrusy. Like fish loves, I love to squirt lemon juice or lime juice right on my fried fish all the time. So I love this little cake. And when the Boy Scouts stayed that time, I also made one just like this, except I did it with the orange. So it, you had lemon and I did a lemon cake. And so I had lemon and lime and orange to choose from for you to um, eat after your fish fry. So um, anyway, now I need to let these completely cool down all the way before we ice it, okay? So I'm going to see y'all back in just a little bit. Okay, y'all, we are down to the icing. Yes, we are, or the frosting, or whatever we want to call it. Um, we're going to use one box or one pound box of powdered sugar or confectioner sugar. But first, I'm going to cream the cream cheese and the butter. This is just your traditional cream cheese frosting. And I love it. I don't know about y'all, but I love it. Cream cheese is my most favorite flavor in the whole wide world. <laughs> I first tasted it, I was probably four maybe three and i begged my mother for like it seemed like an eternity to a little three or four year old but probably just several days please make me a cream cheese pie we gone to a family reunion well she never did make me a whole cream cheese pie but what she did she bought a thing of cream cheese and then i guess she put some sugar in it and put it in the refrigerator for me like that and i could just get me a little bit of it and eat it and I just thought I was in hog heaven. <laughs> yes, I did. I loved it. Um, I just thought, where has this been my whole life? You know, and I went with three or four. I'm going to cream this. That is eight ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, okay? I was afraid it was going to flop out of there. Um, and if you get this out and it's not room temperature and it's refrigerated, Unwrap it just like I did and put it in this bowl and put it in your microwave for like 10 second intervals until it's got the chill off of it real good. Don't get it warm, you know, because we're going to ice a cake with it. And then room temperature stick of unsalted butter is what I have. I'm going to cream these together and then I'll come back to y'all. Okay, guys, that's just been a minute or two. And I'm going to put one teaspoon of vanilla in here. That will just enhance that cream cheese flavor. Yummy. And this one box of powdered sugar. And you know, if we put it all in there at one time, you know what it's going to do. It's going to make Christmas rain down in here on the city. It's like it's snowing. So I'm just going to put about a third of it and work it in there slowly, okay? Okay, I know I said it again, didn't I? Did some of you say okay back? <laughs> One of you told me you did, <laughs> and I love it. All right, guys, that was a third. Let's put another third and see what happens. 
Oh no! That worked out pretty good. Let's go on. And I'm trying to see how many grams this one pound box of confectioner sugar is. In case you're not here where we say a pound here in the U.S. Um, 454 grams of confectioner sugar. 16 ounces or one pound. Okay, here we go, guys. I'm going to mix this until it's nice and smooth and creamy. No lumps. Just a couple more minutes and it's nice and smooth. Let's taste it. I know. Y'all want to taste it? I always wish so bad I could just, I stand here and just feed y'all till it was gone. <laughs> That tastes just like cream cheese frosting, which I love. Or icing, I don't know. I don't know which one to say. I never do. <laughs> okay, guys, we gotta wait on that cake. It's got to get completely cool, and we're gonna frost it, okay? Okay, guys, I put me a little dollop of icing on my cake pedestal because that way your cake won't slide around off of it. Um, before I learned that, I learned that the hard way. Man, I was dancing a jig in the kitchen trying to catch that cake. <laughs> Carefully, I'm placing this up here because I'm going to tell you what. This little cake is moist, but it's going to be good like that, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. And if your cake falls apart whatsoever, guess what? No problem because we're about to frost it, right? I know. So just put you just a little layer right down in here in the in the middle layers because we need plenty for the outside so don't don't do too much on the inside okay <laughs> you know what i also thought i thought like a lime curd or a lemon curd would be really good inside this cake it would wouldn't it i know i think it'd be really good there's so many other ways i think of doing this cake that i have to um ground myself and say, okay, Amy, no, let's just do it this way today, girl. I'll be in here all day and we gotta make supper. <laughs> okay, y'all, the next layer's going on. Y'all see, I just did a thin layer. Real careful. Boom, let's see. Yeah, I'll put him. Yesterday, I was shopping in Big Star getting stuff for supper today and this sweet lady walked up to me. I noticed she looked at me really a lot when we walked past one another, shopping in the meat section. And the next thing you know, I got this little tap on my shoulder and she said, do you do a little cooking show? And I said, yes ma'am, I do. I had my mask on though, y'all know, I do. And she said, I recognized your eyes. I said, oh my goodness. And she said she watched me all the time and she really enjoyed it. And that made my day. I just love that, y'all. I just love that she really enjoys it. That's what I love to hear. And later, her name's Miss Joyce. Hey, Miss Joyce. <laughs> I told her I was going to give her a shout out. And she just was like, so humble. You know, I was like, oh, no. You know, and I was like, yes, ma'am. You know, I was just so happy she took the time to make me feel better. So, hey, Miss Joyce. And thank you for that, girl. And um, we were standing at the, we were checking out later. Going with my third layer, guys. And I'm so, he's wanting to stick, 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 stick. There we go. You got to get committed when you're moving them. <laughs> anyway, we were checking out just a little while later. And she was at one check stand and I was at another. She was with her husband. And she got to talking again about, I'm just going to ice top and all the sides, guys about me having a cooking show and was telling her little checker cashier and uh her husband he said and i thought it was the sweetest little compliment you know we we love to hear our husband talk like that he said she watches cooking shows all the time and i tell her all the time you could teach all of them something i don't know why you watch it you know and i just thought that was the sweetest compliment and i said yes sir i bet she could teach me a thing or two i sure do but um 
if we love to cook, we love to watch other people cook too, don't we? And it kind of inspires us and gives us um, ideas, you know, and we can take it and make it our own, you know. But I just thought that was the sweetest little compliment of Miss Joyce that um, her husband would say that about her. I just thought that was sweet. She must feed him good. Yes, she does. Um, and I feel so much better now that I'm through with my taxes for the year and I get back in the kitchen with y'all. Oh my goodness, it, this is therapeutic to me. Like right now, just sitting here and icing this cake is just total therapy to me. And y'all, it's free. I'm not paying anybody, am I? <laughs> um, I love it. And I pray that any, all of you who, if you don't know what you love to do, I pray that you can find what you love to do because it's therapy to us. And it it doesn't have to be cooking. Not everybody needs to love to cook, right? We need some people that loves to eat. We need people that love to do all kinds of things. Uh, some love to paint, to write, to draw. Um, I love to work out in my yard too, like plant things. I love that. Uh, sew, cross stitch, crochet. We've all got something we love to do. Some of us love to read. My daddy, oh my goodness, he can read, read, read. My mother always loved to read as well. And so I pray that if you're wandering out there or unhappy, I pray you do what you love to do and you're going to get happier. Happier! Because it's just therapeutic. And I love being in here with y'all. I just literally, it. I'm like, okay... The world's going to be okay. It's going to be okay just because I'm in here with y'all. I'm just so happy. So happy. I'm trying hard not to get crumbs. I didn't crumb coat this like the professionals. I'm just slapping it on there, huh? This is plenty of icing. And that's a good thing. Yes, it is. There's something else I want to talk to y'all about. I don't remember what it was. Maybe I'll think about it during supper. Just ice it however you want to. I kind of like to do it where it's got a little bit of design on the outside on this particular one. And I use that half a lime to cut up and try to make something pretty on the top. <laughs> yes, I did. I did do that. Let's see here, guys. Yummy. The sun's still shining outside. I love to take my food outside to take pictures of it. Because <laughs> the sunlight is so pretty on it. Y'all, I took that half a lime that we had left over and I made me some thin slices out of it. And then I cut them in half, but not all the way where they're still together like that. And then you see him, I'm just taking my kind of twisting like that. Isn't that pretty? Same thing with him. I did me three slices and I'm just going to kind of twist them. Kind of twist them and sort of place them kind of beside one another like that. Just like that. How pretty is that? Something else you could do is like zest a lime all over it and give it little green speckles on there. That would be really pretty. I want to come show y'all. And you know we've got to cut into it, right? Yes, we do. See it up close. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> okay, y'all. I know. Enough messing around, right? Let's cut into this little thing. It is that time. Now, listen. Normally, I would totally chill this cake in the refrigerator. Either all day long or overnight. Okay? Because it seems like it sort of sets the cake like it condenses down and they all the the frosting and the glaze and the cake it all comes together and like becomes one you know and it really does but um we want to see inside this little thing don't we? i know so we're gonna cheat and we're gonna cut into it but like i say i think it does prettier slices and just is better the next day or so after you've let it rest i'm gonna move a little line Want to cut where y'all can see as well. I can.
can tell it's so moist. Y'all saw it rendered me speechless. <laughs> can you see this? I'm going to come show y'all, but I'm too afraid to let it just sit there and toggle on that cake server. Oh my. Oh my. This is the time I wish so badly I could give y'all a bite. Do y'all see this cake? Do you see that? Look, you can see how moist it is. Oh my goodness. Watch this. Watch, watch this. Y'all. <laughs> Go make this cake. Do it for Easter. Do it for just because, right? That's what I say all the time. Just because. Just make it just because. Or do one of the other flavors. Or do them all, for Pete's sake. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to see my mama and visit her. And she loves a piece of cake. And she loves citrus flavors. So... I'm going to share a piece with her, and she is going to love it. That's one thing she still does love is cake. So, I'm going to share a piece of cake with her and spend some time with her. And um, I think to get cleaned up and get off here because i got to cook supper for Joe Murray. Yes, I do. <laughs> y'all, I love y'all. Y'all, try to get out, get a little sunshine, or just get in the window and get a little sunshine like they told me when... I had John Tyler, that was the time they would, you'd have the baby and they'd send you home next day and you're like, what, wait, are we ready? <laughs> and um, a nurse would just show up the next day at your house, so John Tyler was only like three days old and we had been at the house a couple of nights. And so she showed up and he had a little bit of jaundice, just a normal transition after being born. So he was a little bit yellowy. And she said, oh, it's okay, just put him in the window in his bassinet. So... So I did. I wheeled his little bassinet over there and his little naked body in the sunlight for a little while every day till he uh, got over his jaundice. So. <laughs> so just do that. If you can't get outside, go put yourself up against the window, okay? And I hope y'all all feel better. We're about to be cooking and cooking and cooking together and getting outside in this springtime weather. So y'all don't go anywhere. Don't go too far, okay? I love y'all. I'll see y'all next time.